Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and let's continue with the series on Python. Now in this video, we'll try an example where we'll try to find a factorial of a number. Now it is factorial. So if, you, if, if I give you a number 5, you have to say 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 or you can say 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5, right? So ultimately the answer will be same, right? So if I say factorial of 5, this is the value. If you say factorial of 4, this is the value, right? So I want to execute this in a programming because a user can give you any big value, right? So you have to find a factorial of it. Normally, we, if you want to achieve this, of course, you have to start with one and you have to end till the number, right? Or you can go in reverse order as well, but let's go in ascending order. So what I will do is I will say, hey, user, I mean, a user will give you any value. You can actually take the input from the user. But time being, let me assign a value. I will say the value is five here and I want to call a function which will give me a result and I will call the function as fact. Again, you, you can do this without functions as well, but since we have working with function, it's a good practice to do it in that way, right? I will use a function called as fact in which I will pass x. See, I don't know what this function will do at this point, but then I'm saying, hey, I, I want a fact function which will give me a factorial of a number. But unfortunately, we have not defined that yet, so we'll, we'll do that, but I want to also print the value of result. That's the main job we have here. But of course, we don't have this fact function, so let's define it. The, the way you define that is by saying def, and you have to mention the fact, the function name, which is fact, and you have to pass a variable, or you accept a variable, which will say x. Again, there's no compulsion that you have to use the same variable. In fact, uh, we'll use a variable name as n, okay? We'll give a colon, and here, how do I, how do I find a factorial here? So if you see the example here, when you say the factorial of five, you have to go from one to five, right? So of course we will be using a loop. So we'll say for i in. Now we want to start from one and we have to go till five, right? And that's where we will use range. Now in range, if you specify only five, then it will start with zero. It will end at four and that's the issue. I want to start from one and we have to end at five. In that case, I will start with one, not with zero and I have to end at n, right? So we have to say n plus one because uh, if, you, if I only say n, it will stop at four. We want to stop at five, right? We'll give a colon and this is where you will do the calculation. But after every calculation, we have to see, ultimately we have to say one into one, okay? Because we want the initial value and then the result will be multiplied by two. That result will be multiplied by three. That result will be multiplied by four, right? That's what we want to achieve. So in this case, I will take a variable called as uh, f equal to one. Initially, the value of f is one. And every time this loop runs, you have to say f is equal to f into i, right? So if the i value is one, then f into one will be one. If the value of, I mean, the value of f is one, right? If the value of i is two, then the uh, value of f is one, right? One into two is uh, two. And then the value of f now is th uh, two. Then you have to say, uh, the value of i will become three. So you have to say two into three, right? So that's how it goes. Uh, and ultimately you have to return the value of f, that simple, right? So if I run this code, you can see we got the factorial as 120. Now if I change the value to 4, the factorial of 4 is 24, let me just verify. And that works, right? Now you can also use, uh, you can also do step by step here example if I want to see how it works. So I will start with this point, that's the execution point. And I will say run and debug. Let's do step by step here. So for next step, for the step one, we have f8, so let's do that. So I will say f8 and you can see the value of x is four, okay? And then we are calling the fact function and fact function is giving me four, right? Uh, we can also do that here. We can apply a breakpoint here. Let's do that. So when you say f8, you can see the value of f is one and it goes into i, the value of i is one, the value of f is also one, it will be multiplied, the value of f becomes uh, one now, and then when you go back, i becomes two, the value of f changes to two, you can see that, and when you go back, i value becomes three, the value of f becomes six, right, that's important. Uh, when you go back, i becomes four, the value of f now becomes four into six, which is uh, 24, and then the value of, right, so that's, that's the end, right, we have to reach till four, and if you, if you return, the return value would be, uh, 24, right? That's what we got, right? That's simple. So that's how you can do the factorial. Now there's one more way of finding a factorial, which is very amazing that we'll be doing in the next video. Just to give you the hint, it is about recursion, right? But what is that? We'll talk about that in the next video. So that's it from this video. I hope you're enjoying this series. Let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for, for the videos. Bye-bye.